Previously, we saw that the special theory of relativity predicts time dilation. So basically, the time for objects that are traveling with very high velocities will slow down compared to their stationary counterparts. So now let's apply time dilation to elementary particles. Now recall that the greater the mass of an object, the more energy is required to accelerate that object to a very high velocity. Now, and that's exactly why ordinary macroscopic objects have very small velocities compared to the velocity of light because it requires a great deal of energy to accelerate those macroscopic objects. And that's exactly why it's very difficult to measure time dilation experimentally using macroscopic ordinary objects. Now, elementary particles, on the other hand, have very small masses and therefore require considerably less energy to accelerate them to very high velocities. And therefore, time dilation for elementary and subatomic particles becomes much easier to measure experimentally. Now, a muon is one such example of an elementary particle that is unstable and decays with a lifetime, a mean lifetime of 2.2 microseconds when that muon is at rest. So this is how long it takes our muon to decay when that muon is stationary. Now, according to time dilation, if our muon travels with a very high velocity, the lifetime of that muon should technically increase with respect to the stationary counterpart. So to see exactly what we mean, let's look at the following example. So let's begin with part one. So if the muon is accelerated to a speed of 70% of the speed of light in a vacuum, find the lifetime of a muon at this particular speed with respect to the stationary counterpart. So we basically want to apply the time dilation equation. So remember, the time dilation equation tells us that time for an object that is moving very quickly will slow down compared to the stationary counterpart and that means the lifetime of this muon should increase. So let's make sure that's actually correct by looking at this equation. So delta t is the time or the lifetime of our muon when that muon is moving with the velocity v. Now velocity v is the speed of the muon, it's 70% of the speed of light in a vacuum. C is the speed of light in a vacuum, and this delta T naught is the lifetime of our muon when it is at rest, when it's stationary. So let's plug in our values. So we know that velocity is equal to 0.7 multiplied by C. So 0.7 multiplied by C, we square that, and the C squares will cancel on top and bottom. So the bottom becomes the square root of 1 minus 0.7 squared. Squared. Now 1 minus 0.49 gives us 0.51. So we square root 0.51 and that becomes the bottom. Now the top is equal to 2.2 microseconds or equivalently 2.2 times 10 to negative 6 seconds. So we divide and we get that our lifetime of our mu1 when it's moving at a velocity v is equal to 3.08 times 10 to the negative 6 seconds or about 3.08 micro so these should be microseconds. So we see that the lifetime of our muon that is traveling with the high velocity does in fact increase 
from 2.2 microseconds to 3.08 microseconds. Now let's move on to part 2. How far would the muon travel at a constant velocity v before actually decaying? So we want to apply the time dilation principle. So the distance is equal to the velocity of our muon multiplied by the lifetime of that muon taken into consideration time dilation. So velocity is 0.7 multiplied by the speed of light in a vacuum vacuum multiplied by this quantity. So we get about 647 meters. So now let's move on to part three. So using classical physics and not taking into consideration the theory of relativity and time dilation, find the distance traveled before the muon decays. So now we want to use this time interval. So d naught is equal to v multiplied by delta t naught. That gives us 0 0.7 times the speed of light in a vacuum multiplied by this time quantity. And that gives us 462 meters. So we see that classical physics gives us a distance that is less than our distance that is given by using the special theory of relativity. So basically, because the lifetime of the particle increases as a result of time dilation, the distance it travels also increases.